Hey everyone, my name is Kestrel Michaud and I am a classically trained fine artist who specializes in making imaginative realism art quilts. I've been making artwork since I, before I could walk and I graduated with honors from the Ringling College of Art and Design with a BFA in illustration in 2010. Today I work as a full-time professional art quilter, writer, speaker, and teacher. I'm also a member of the Studio Art Quilt Associates, or SACWA. I volunteer as a pod leader here in Florida, and I'm a member of the SACWA Global Exhibitions Committee, and I'm a regular contributor to the SACWA Journal, which is a quarterly magazine published for our members. SACWA is the most positive, supportive, and enthusiastic art community of which I've ever been involved, and I'm so grateful to be part of it. One of the things SACWA does best is put together exhibitions of phenomenal art, and I'm honored to have my quilt, There's Something in the Water, be part of this one, Sakwa's Light the World. Almost all of the art quilts I make are in the steampunk genre of fantasy. In a nutshell, steampunk is Victorian science fiction. It's characterized by a blending of industrial design elements like elaborate clocks, cogs, metal pieces, corsets, and steam-powered machinery, combined with the fine artistry of the Victorian era. I love steampunk because I'm a very creative person, but I'm also a very analytical person, and I like working in a genre that celebrates both free-spirited imagination and cogent engineering. I have an entire fictional steampunk universe in my head, and the quilts I create are illustrated stories from that world. There's something in the water is one such story. A steam-powered submersible craft is caught in a raging storm out on the ocean, surrounded by enormous waves. It's racing away from something when suddenly an off-page flash of lightning backlights the wave. The illuminated waters reveal an enormous creature lurking in the depths, tentacles extended toward the fleeing submarine. We depend on light to see the world around us, and consequently the absence of light is where our deepest fears reside. A momentary flash can reveal something we otherwise wouldn't have been able to see. And to me, knowing something scary is out there, but not knowing where it is because I can't see it in the darkness is terrifying. And that's the mood I was aiming to capture with There's Something in the Water. My style of art is called Fused Raw Edge Applique. Let me explain. Fused means I use a heat sensitive material, a fusible, to glue pieces of fabric together. Raw edge means the cut edges of each piece of fabric are showing. They're visible to viewers. And applique is a style of art in which multiple pieces of fabric are combined to create a larger picture. Each quilt I make has hundreds or even thousands of pieces of fabric that make up the full design. There's something in the water, for example, is made from 600 pieces of fabric. The most pieces of fabric I've ever had in a single quilt was 2,657, and that was in Rose, my steampunk girl. Other than updating my procedure to be entirely digital design, I'm using the same core process now as I did back when I first started making fabric pictures in high school. My first step is to hand draw a digital version of my design. Using an app on my iPad called Concepts, I start by doing a quick concept sketch to outline my idea. And then I draw a much more detailed version, export it as an SVG, and take the drawing over to Adobe Illustrator on my laptop where I add color. The full size, full color artwork is my template or pattern for making the physical quilt. This is the template for There's Something in the Water. At this point, the template is a lot like a jigsaw puzzle. It's made from hundreds and thousands of individual pieces, but those pieces all share edges with each other. They're on the same plane, nothing overlaps. And that's a problem for me because without overlap, none of the pieces can fuse together. So I go through the entire design and I manually add overlap piece by piece. During this process, I also assign each piece a number which is how I know how many there are in the total quilt, and also so I can line them back up after cutting. So I essentially design a gigantic applique by number for myself. And it's at this point that I'm done with the digital design and can start picking fabric. Once the fabrics are chosen, I add the fusible and treat them with diluted Mod Podge to prevent fraying. I cut all the pieces for the design using my Cricut Explore Air 2 cutting machine, which is significantly faster and more accurate than me doing it by hand with scissors. And after everything is cut, I match each piece up to the template according to its number and iron everything in place one at a time. This is by far my favorite part of the process because it's always so exciting to see my design come to life. And then last but not least is the quilting. This was the first quilt that I quilted on my Q20 long arm machine, which is actually a funny story. 
So before being juried into Sakwa's Light the World exhibition, there's something in the water hung on display at Road to California in January of 2021. The deadline to enter Road to California was on a Monday the previous November, so November 2020. The Thursday before that deadline, I was starting to quilt on my domestic machine, a Bernina 790 Plus, when the needle broke and the mechanism jammed. Like, it had to go to the shop. There was no more using that machine. Fortunately for me, my Q20 was delivered the very next day on Friday, and then I did nothing but quilt the entire weekend in order to get it done in time. I borrowed my mom's machine to do the binding, took a photo, and then squeaked my entry in under the deadline. And it went on to win first place in its category at that show, so all the hard work was definitely worth it. Thank you so much for watching. You can view my entire portfolio or sign up for my monthly newsletter on my website, kestrelmichaud.com. I teach my process of quilt design on Patreon by uploading monthly instructional videos. You can find out more at patreon.com slash or you can follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, pretty much all social media. I'm at Kestrel Michaud. And if you'd like to learn more about Sakwa, visit our website at sakwa.com.